What's up, guys? Jesse Think Blue 77, and I thought I'd uh, post this video right before the Super Bowl. Um, excited to watch that later on today. And um, so let's get started. Um, picked up a nice postcard here this last week, and uh, really sweet card. Um, card I had never seen before. Uh, shopping for his card, you know, uh, his rookie at least. And I uh, haven't come across it. Well, I've been putting it off. But I did find this uh, postcard. You guys know I like these old postcards. And this is one I've never seen before. And so glad it came across and I got it. Because none other than uh, Pistol Pete Reezer. I mean, check out this card. So nice. Got the nice auto here at the bottom. Like a... Like, you guys know I like my autos. Um, just an awesome car, awesome shot of him swinging. Just it has 40s written all over it. So, so happy to have added this one. There's the back. Uh, has a little bit of writing, I guess. Whoever had it put his name on there and the date of uh, that he passed away in 1981. But such a sweet card. This guy here doesn't really. I don't think it's a whole lot of love. <laughs> he was a really good player, uh, but he was riddled with a lot of injuries throughout his career, like we've seen with other players. Um, he was a St. Louis native, originally signed with the Cardinals at age 19. He was among a group of minor leaguers at that time that were declared free agents. So Branch Rickey, being the vice president of the Cardinals at that time, uh, he was afraid of losing them, so what he did is he arranged a deal with the Dodgers so that the Dodgers would put him in their minor league system and kind of like hide him away from the system so that maybe later on he would be able to, you know, pick him up for the Cardinals. But uh, in 39 and 40, he did so well in the minors that the Dodgers were just forced to uh, to, to keep him. So um, in 41, his rookie season... Um, he helped the Dodgers get a pennant, um, their first pennant since 1920. He was also, uh, he, uh, he was also the National League batting title champion that year. He led the league in doubles, triples, total bases, runs scored, slugging percentage, and he was also the starter of the 41 All-Star. So, I mean, he killed it that year, his rookie season, and, uh, he, his potential was just uh, ridiculous. But then in uh, 42, in July of 42 is when his uh, injuries began. Uh, in July of 42 against the Cardinals, Enos Slaughter hit one out. And as he was going out for it, he slammed into the outfield wall face first, knocking him pretty much out, um, causing an infield home run for uh Enos Slaughter and um that was the beginning of uh what would later be his uh uh injury prone career so um he uh he would have I believe with the Dodgers alone about 11 slams into the wall so I mean he was a all out baller you know he, he just didn't care for injury he was going after it um a speedy guy. Not only that, even though he was riddled with a lot of concussions, shoulder injuries throughout his career, um, short career, he uh, he was still really fast. So he was a real good base dealer. Um, Leo DeRocher was his uh, manager during his uh, early years. And uh, late, years later, he once mentioned that uh, if he had to compare him to anybody out, you know, he would probably compare him to Willie Mays. He, had, he was that good. Um, it's just, a sh you know, a shame that, uh, he was always, uh, injured here in front of you guys here. I have a 1947 Dodgers yearbook and, uh, let me show you that real quick. So this is also the year, uh, Jackie, uh, broke the color barrier. So since Jackie started in September, I believe these yearbooks were done. So they, uh, inserted this page in here which uh, gives you a breakdown of 
Jackie's uh, story here before uh, breaking into the majors. But we'll get to that at another time. I want to show you the... Uh, here we have an image, if you can see it here. That's uh, Pete Reeser there being carried off the field. This was his 11th time, I think, crashing into the wall where he's getting uh, carried off. And this injury was so severe that uh, they even called the priest out because they didn't think he was going to make it. That's how bad it was. So pretty crazy to think uh, back then. Because of this, Ebbets Field in 1948 was the first uh, stadium to have implemented the padding on the infield, uh, on the outfield walls. I mean, so, yeah, let's put this guy back. So because of him, started putting padding on the outfield. So he played for Brooklyn from 40 to 48, the Boston Braves 49 and 50, the Pirates in 51, and the Indians in 52. And that was pretty much it for his career. Uh, he could have been one of the greats, I think, if, you know, he wouldn't have had that. And um, he stayed coaching in baseball. Uh, when In 63, he won a World Series with the Dodgers when he was uh, coaching them. And um, he coached through maybe like the early 70s, and then that was it. And then he passed away in 81. But uh, great player. I know in one of his books, like I mentioned, uh, he was considered one of the top 100 players of all time uh just like i said it's just a shame that he was always injury prone so there it is wanted to bring this one up i might end up looking for his uh his one of his cards here recently i'm still undecided on which one but i had never seen these it's great uh this right here to me, at least, uh, shows you baseball in the 1940s, for sure. So, happy with that. Um, now let's go watch some Super Bowl. <laughs> and um, as always, guys, thanks uh, for watching. And I will see you on the next one.